Okay, my office is a wreck. I am actually, uh, I was just shooting some stuff here with some tube lights. And uh, I don't have the proper way to connect them, so I just use basically strings from the end of uh, face masks. Once I'm done with them, I just cut them and use those almost as uh, holders. And then I also have some other things here. I gotta move this one. I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen these before. These are Quasar, um, Quasar Science. I don't even know the model number. Q50XG, these are bicolor tube lights. They're relatively inexpensive when it comes to tube lights. Uh, should I make a video about those in the near future? Um, probably. Um, okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just reset this for a second. And when you see me back, it's gonna basically be me here with everything set back the way it should be. So the R5 is not as perfect as I thought it was. <laughs> How's it going guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rob Novoa and I make videos about photography, filmmaking, camera, travel, whatever I feel like making. And uh, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how as much as I love this camera, it is not perfect. I've had some issues in the last couple of months and I figured since I made a lot of videos talking about how great of a camera it is and how good it has been to me, I figured it would only be fair if I made an honest video about how I've had some issues with it recently. So. Uh, a year later of having the camera. I still love it. I love the quality that I get out of it. I love the image um, But there's an issue that it's been a known issue, which is the overheating now I expected it to overheat when shooting video, especially when shooting 4k 120 I never even bother shooting 8k, but I never expected it to overheat when shooting photos now a couple of months ago I was shooting a video for a local tattoo shop and we were in the middle of this event and we were shooting a lot of slow motion so a lot of 4k 60 and a lot of 4k 120 because that's what you do and i started to basically overheat and i almost expected it it took about an hour and a half before it started to really overheat and tell me that i couldn't record anymore which is fine i have a backup camera i have a partner that we shoot with so no problem, I was expecting it. So I adjusted and I moved on. In the following months, I've shot about five or six weddings and at about half of those weddings, when shooting photos, my camera started to overheat. Now I will say it does give you a pretty lengthy warning that it's starting to overheat. So you can take the battery out, open the, open the screen and kind of just let it cool out a little bit. And after 20, 30 minutes, it'll be cool enough that you can go back to shooting normally. But it also depends how often or how many photos you take. I take about a thousand to 1500 photos with this particular camera and then another thousand with my other one just I, I I'm an overshooter when it comes to weddings I'm sorry okay I'm, I'm sorry why am I apologizing so um, yeah that that kind of became a little bit of a problem because reality is some people can only have one camera they don't have a backup and if you're shooting a wedding and your camera decides to overheat or get to the point of overheating right before the big moments you may miss the shot and you may have some issues on your hands so yeah I don't know that that's been a bit of a, that's been a bit of a problem. So I don't know if I can necessarily recommend this to those people who shoot for long periods of time. If you're shooting bursts, if you're shooting weddings, foot sports, anything like that, it might not necessarily be the best option for you if it's your only camera. Now, because I have the EOS R as my backup, whenever I feel that getting, whenever I see it's overheating, I will switch out to the other camera and shoot with the other camera while this one cools down. And it's not a big deal, but, uh, but if you only have one camera, that can be an issue. As far as everything else with this camera, I absolutely love it. I've shot plenty of videos that you've seen on my channel with this camera. I've shot plenty of photos. I took it to Iceland recently and took 
some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. We got super lucky, we saw the Northern Lights, we got a lot of spots to ourselves because there's not that many people traveling there, although a lot more than I expected, but not that many. I will make a video about Iceland. I'm working on a longer Iceland project type video, so it might take a little while to get that out, but I just want it to be perfect because, well, it's fucking Iceland, it's amazing. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. I wanted to kind of make a video talking about how it's really not as perfect of a camera as I thought it would be initially. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Hopefully soon. All right. Okay, how does this new setup look? It's uh, it's a little bit different. I'm shooting on the C70 now with the Sigma Art 18 to 35 at 1.8, um, still with the same light. But yeah, I'm just testing it out. Uh, I so far I've loved it. I took it to Iceland with me, and the footage looks absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I think it's a great A cam. With the overheating on the R5, it kind of scared me because starting next year, I'm gonna probably start shooting more wedding videos. And the last thing I want to have is a camera overheat on me when I need it the most. And 4K 120 is everything when it comes to getting that smoother, smooth, buttery uh, action, if you will. And the fact that you can record audio while doing that is pretty nice. And although I'm going to make a full on video about the C70 after having it for a couple more weeks, I just want to make sure that when I talk about it and when I talk about my favorite things and everything that I love about it, I pretty much know what I'm talking about exactly. So, yeah, um, that, that's it, uh, I guess, I don't know. Um, it looks great, I think it looks good. I have my monitor over here and I can see it and it looks pretty darn good. Um, also, shout out to Griffin Conway, he makes awesome LUTs for C-Log 2. Um, that is what I'm using right now on this video just because I really like the look and I figured I would just speed up my processing when editing videos, so this is, this is one of his, so. Anyways, I'll see you guys soon.